Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here, and this is how to use a Ranguru. So, have you ever heard of Giraffe Rig? If not, then this should be a new experience for you. So, the normal psychic typing is actually a very, very low risk typing. That when you look at it, we have two weaknesses Bug, which isn't super common, and Dark, which is an okay weakness to deal with. On that, we have an immunity to Ghost, which was a weakness, and then we resist Psychic. Just defensively, that typing is really good, that everything else is a neutral hit, and while we don't have a ton of resistances, there's not really much that a Ranguru is worried about. Offensively though, Normal and Psychic doesn't give us anything, that we are going to be just resisted by Steel very heavily. And then we don't have a lot of super effective hits, and then the Dart typing is still going to be a pretty big issue, and we don't have any extra damage on Ghost-type Pokemon, just with our neutral stab right there. But it's really down to the stats on the Oranguru. As a tanky Pokemon for setup, it succeeds, I would say. That 90 on the hit points, 80 on the defense. If we're going full of investment, that's going to make us fairly tanky. And then 110 on the special defense is going to give us that little bit of extra survivability. So really putting us in good ranges with these stats. And I really like the just the distribution right here. That we're not going to be a physical attacker, so we don't need to worry about any wasted stats there. 60 speed, I would actually prefer less on the speed to make us a better Trick Room Pokemon. Then 90 on the special attack can still deal a decent amount of damage. So we have respectable everything right here on the stats for the Oranguru. So Oranguru gets Inner Focus and Telepathy, and I'll say that both of them are actually very usable. That Inner Focus, if you want to make sure your Trick Room set up or whatever you're doing, doesn't get stopped out by a Fake Out or Telepathy if you're going for something that hits everything on the field, like the Surf, like the Earthquake, and even Symbiosis. Like, Symbiosis is a freaking ridiculous move, and only one evolutionary line gets it. So we haven't seen Florgus do much, but Oranguru has so much ally combo potential that once it gets access to it, that's going to be something really interesting. So passes the Pokemon's hold item to the ally when that ally consumes a, a hold item. That's scary to think about, and we'll just have to see how that plays out. So not available right now, but I feel that Oranguru does a lot better than Passimian with its abilities because we can use both of our abilities with some very high success, and yeah, does, we don't have to wait for a hidden ability at all. So as for the rest of the moves on the Oranguru, it's kind of trick room and stuff, and we can make it work, because we also get that Instruct. So Instruct is a new move that only Oranguru gets access to, and it makes it to where the target gets to use their last m used move again. And this is why Oranguru is such a powerful Pokemon, because after you use Instruct, the ally goes, and it throws out the move, and then crazy things are going to happen. So imagine, you know, one Garchomp Earthquake, that hurts, that does over half your health, and you hope that next time, you know, you can outspeed or you can KO the Garchomp before it hits you. Well, imagine two Garchomps hitting you in one turn. That's the power that we're looking at right there. And then with the telepathy, yeah, that means Oranguru is staying safe, and then all the opponents are dying. Uh, doubling up on the Rock Slide. Two Rock Slide procs means there's a higher chance of the opponent flinching because the, the effect will stack right there. So Oranguru just has a lot of crazy things going on. We have Calm Mind if we want to even like build up into damage. We have a little bit of extra coverage that we want to play out as well. And now it's time to go on over to Pokemon Showdown and check out Oranguru. So it's pretty much these three moves and then whatever tech you want to bring. Now technically it's either Psy Psychic or the Psy Shock. But pretty much you want a stab move that's going to hit the opponent because you're just getting free special attack damage that does add up. And it does give you some other opportunities to do stuff. That if you know your ally Pokemon has a big chance of fainting either from priority or just some kind of other effect, then that means you at least have some damage or way to set up for yourself. And that just kind of shows you can go like Psychic Calm Mind. That's not always about Instruct. I think what sets apart the good Oranguru players from the great ones is understanding when to Instruct, when not to. You know, sometimes Trick Room doesn't happen, so you have to anticipate if the Pokemon that you're going to be Instructing is going to even be alive at the end of the turn. If not, then you can try to play for your own setup. You know, every time you use Calm Mind, you are getting tankier. So if they have special attackers, then you already have one or two Calm Minds built up. Then you just win by nuking them with a Psychic and not taking any damage. Also just Trick Room, so that means we're going to be running that sassy nature because we want to be just slow and bulky. So Ranguru is going to be max out hit points, max out defense, special defense nature, and then we're looking pretty ridiculous right there. And I've also seen some, they go with that relaxed nature because if we're Calm Mind boosting, we need like the max out of hit points. We need the max out of defense. Also, there's more physical attackers in the game in general. So depending on where the meta is going, that's also something that you might want to switch around with for the nature. And then you see this strange little berry right here. Confusion berries getting a buff to restoring half of a Pokemon's hit points is fairly ridiculous. I've seen a lot of Oranguru run it because it's just reliable. When you're this tanky, there's a lot of Pokemon that are going to be like borderline three hit KOing you. 
So you just survive, you get half your health back, and then it's like a free recover, and now you still have another hit you get to survive if the opponent isn't dead by then, because remember, you have Trick Room on your side, you have Damage on your side, you have Instruct on your side, so it's all that fun stuff adding up and then bringing you a Rangru. So just kind of showing Inner Focus or the Telepathy, depending on what you want to run. And then there's some other things that a Rangru could do. Set up the Psychic Terrain. Psychic Terrain... Even though it's a lot of setup, you know, you have to Trick Room, you have to Psychic Terrain, depending on what your ally Pokemon is doing, you know, they're going to protect as you Trick Room, and then you just kind of judge it from there. If you have a reliable amount of damage, then maybe you can set up the Psychic Terrain if you fear for, like, priority moves maybe coming in, but also it just kind of shows there's other tech moves that Oranguru can run, and if you use Psychic Terrain, then it's going to be boosting the damage of your Psychic or your Psyshock. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say for items, like, you can, you can run Citrus Berry, uh, more reliable, less health, or you run the Confusion Berry. That's kind of going to be it on the Oranguru. Now, if Taunt does pick up, then you will really want that Mental Herb. Because Mental Herb is going to make it to where if you get taunted, well, you shrug that off in Trick Room anyways. Because Oranguru is just really tanky, and there's a lot for your opponent to worry about. Because technically, while you're thinking, oh, my ally is just going to protect as I set up Trick Room. But if you are playing it smart, and you know that Oranguru is going to get a lot of focus or something, or you know that your ally Pokemon can survive the hit, then you just throw out the damage anyways. They're focusing Oranguru. If Oranguru doesn't get KO'd, then Trick Room still goes off, and then the opponent's at a huge disadvantage. And Trick Room always finds itself in the meta somehow. That fast Pokemon happen, Trick Room comes on the field, and then that team just gets wrecked. And then you're like, oh yeah, by the way, Trick Room is really powerful. So that's going to be a big play with the Oranguru. Very, very reliable, going to be like one of the main Trick Room Pokemon that we're going to see. But you do have to build a team around it. You need something that combos with the Instruct, or there's going to be other better Trick Room options for you. So then looking at some of the other things that Oranguru can run. Remember, it's not just the Psychic Terrain. It's not just the Calm Mind. These are some other options. We can set Weather. So depending if like Weather Wars are going to be a thing. Also, a good thing about having the Psychic Terrain is that, say they have a Tapu Koko. Say they have a Pokemon that wants a Terrain really badly. Well, Trick Room, Psychic Terrain, Tapu Koko attacks, and it loses that boost of damage already. So you can use it for your own kind of Terrain resetting, and then boosting damage that way. Also, it'll combo with your allied Pokemon. That now you can instruct them. So they use Psychic, get a KO, and then you instruct them, and they use Psychic, and they get another KO. So that could be a very real possibility. We're running all this stuff. We also have Safeguard. So if you don't want any status, that's a thing. Also, we have access to the Light Screen and the Reflect. So even though I advise against it, some people, they could go like four status moves on their Oranguru. It means like Taunt wrecks you. So maybe that's a Mental Herb Oranguru right there. And also, if you lose all of your other Pokemon, then there's like that very small chance. You know, Oranguru is bulky. They ignored it the whole game. All you have to do is use two Psychics and finish off that last opponent. And that could be a chance to win. That would be given up if you're running all status. But if you have that status move, then that's something else that's keeping your allied Pokemon alive. That if you have Trick Room, Instruct, Light Screen, Reflect, they have to wear down a lot of damage. And they have to go through a lot of Pokemon to be able to put a Rangru in that 1v1 or 1vx situation where it needed that damaging move instead. So sometimes that risk can very much be worth it. And now let's look at Rhyperior, because one thing I don't understand is that you can get a Rhyhorn through the Island Scan, so Rhyperior is available right now, and this looks like one of the best options next to the Orangru, because you get Stab Rock Slide, so you have that flinch chance on top of damage, you also have Earthquake, so you have insane amounts of damage with Stab as well, you have Ice Punch, or whatever other kind of coverage you just kind of want to go and throw around right there, and then we have Protect, so you can Protect on that first turn, and then you let things happen, you also have a Lightning Rod, which can shut out some other Pokemon like the Tapu Koko, or anything just trying to throw some damage around, and I don't really think you'd need much more, maybe that Solid Rock, it'll keep you alive against those super effective hits, and yeah, then we just Life Orb, because we can run Life Orb. We can run as much damage amplification as we want because under Trick Room, Rhyperior doesn't have to care about anything. So we run the Brave Nature, max out the attack. In some cases, you want to like go for the bulkiest Pokemon imaginable. But with this, you know, 115 on the hit points, that's already big. Max out the special defense, give you that survivability. And then you just kind of tank and win. If not, you can kind of just sacrifice it right there and be like, okay. Special attacks are going to be tricky anyways. Let's also build up towards, like, defense or something like that. Then we can still be a bulky Rhyperior. But then, Earthquake 2 shots everything. Like, I talked about Garchomp being scary. Rhyperior has more damage than Garchomp and stab boosting on the Rock Slide. While also being, like, viable under that Trick Room. So this is the Pokemon you want next to the Oranguru. It's stupid good. And then I was thinking about similar Pokemon. Wishy Washy. It has a 140 on the offensive stat as well. And it can use Surf or it can also set up a Rain Dance. So we can run Life Orb on Wishy Washy, 
Maybe just use that uh, Citrus Berry to make sure it stays alive just right. But yeah, first turn, Rain Dance Trick Room, and then Surf, and then all the opponents are going to die. We have Ash Ice Beam to polish off the opponent, maybe protect if it looks like really scary, depending on what the opponent has, or some kind of coverage move, just a random hidden power that you need to use to kind of bring your damage together. And then it's a 140 special attack hitting you twice because of the Instruct, because Orangu is crazy like that. And then also Guard Chomp. So I did mention that you don't always have to run that Trick Room, which means if you can play predictively, you can still run some fast Pokemon that offer a lot of threat. Uh, Garchomp, you can just use two Earthquakes, destroy the opponent, or you can go for Rock Slide. You know, Garchomp outspeeds them, hits a Rock Slide, chance for flinch, Orangru sets up that Instruct again for more damage. You can have stuff like that happen. Uh, there's just a lot of really fun things that you can combo out right now. And then that's why I want to go over to Cerebi. So on Cerebi, you can just look up Pokemon by stats. Like this is going to be the order of special attacking Pokemon. So you can find a slow Pokemon with an insane amount of special attack doing an insane amount of damage. I mean, Pokemon like Chandelure, even though Chandelure isn't super slow, Heat Wave, that hits both opponents. So you're just looking for something, hits both opponents that you can instruct, that you can just destroy everything with. And then as you get down the list, it's going to be less power, but still very, very viable options right here. And then you can do the same for attack, look for Earthquake, look for Rock Slide. So ground and rock Pokemon are going to be the best with this for damage. And then we can go and look at the damage calculations, because that's what it's all about. So I'm bringing Silvalli. Normally I bring a frail Pokemon like Weavile just to show those neutral hits. But right here, we're even in doubles. Doubles reduces the damage, but we have Life Orb, Brave Rhyperior, and then the damage amp, and then it's hitting twice, so that means we're just overkilling right there on the Sil Valley. So I'll just make 200 damage on the base power for the Earthquake to simulate it. So yeah, tanky Pokemon like that just kind of die. And then we can even see Rock Slide is still going to be putting down a really solid amount of damage, almost one-shotting the Sil Valley, but also doing damage to the other Pokemon. So if they have a Flying type, might be worth it just to invest in that Rock Slide. I mean, that's another thing that makes the Rhyperior so good with this, that Flying, that's an issue for the Earthquake. Well, you have Ice and you have Rock, and then you get damage on it. So so Valley almost gets KO'd, has a chance, has like a high chance of flinching, and then you KO the other Pokemon as well. A lot of really fun combo things that you can do. Wanted to bring up the Wishy Washy as well. So here we're going to have the Surf against a Garchomp. I mean, set up Rain. So even without Rain, we're still doing one turn KOs onto a Pokemon like the Garchomp. So double split damage doesn't even matter on that Surf. Doesn't even matter. And then that is going to be... Rain boosting damage, and then we go 180 just to kind of show you guys. Insane amounts of comboing right here. So it all just lives and dies on the Oranguru. It's not going to do much by itself. It doesn't have like a lot of sustain. If it had weird sustain options, then maybe like a Calm Mind single set would be really cool. But we don't have recover. We don't have any fun stuff like that. So I'm just thinking we keep it to where it's Oranguru. You build the cool Pokemon around it. If Oranguru gets the successful Trick Room, you win the battle. And that's kind of the breakdown of it right here. Now just looking other Pokemon like the Garchomp. You know, you're still finding one-hit KOs on tanky Pokemon with the Earthquake, with the Dragon Claw. So you're just chipping in the damage. Cool things happen, and that's going to be it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, Oranguru is awesome. I love the combos. I love a lot of things that can happen right here. And there we go. I want to see some cool stuff. Like, this is... These are the opportunities. This is like the infinite potential almost of combo with this, show cool stuff, and win, and then Fan Fridays, and that's it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.